going to show you how to make this super cute wind chime and it's all made with recycled materials which is fun and I'm very fond of doing. So before we get started if you haven't already please subscribe and hit that bell so you get the notifications when we come up with these really cute projects. So let's get started. The materials we are going to use for this project is a drill, uh, we have a 19 gauge wire, a 16 gauge wire, a couple of different pliers, a piece of driftwood, our ruler, here we have a mishmash of old jewelry, some random beads we had kicking around, a few crystals, and a jig here and along with the jig is some of the homemade pegs and just some nails. Now to start off we want to measure our driftwood and here we are looking at about oh nine inches or so. So what we want to do is we want to take our sharpie and we want to mark about an inch in I think from either end in the center so there that's about eight inches and this one here is one inch and then we want to find the center from there so we're looking at about four and a half inches putting our center one there okay and then we want to and we can just eyeball this we don't have to measure it and then we want to put a dot in between those two more a lot more or less equidistance nobody's going to look at this and go oh my gosh they're not exactly one inch one and a half inches apart so you can eyeball them all right, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our drill and we are going to drill all the way through our piece of driftwood. And you don't have to use driftwood. You can do this with a, just a regular dowel, a regular piece of wood. Um, I just really like the driftwood art. Okay, so here we go. Some of these pieces of driftwood are super hard. Others are super soft, so it's just kind of hit and miss. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to make the hangers, which are going to go all the way through, and we're going to hang all of our really fun little bits and pieces of jewelry and crystals. So for this, I'm going to work just off the spool. There are no set measurements. And as you can see, the wire is very dirty, but it's also starting to rust. And I really love that when art is hung outside and it's allowed to rust. It just adds this extra beauty to it, this extra depth to it, I think. So what I decided to do is just to make a few kind of random squiggly squiggly designs I guess for our top part. So we're gonna take our pliers. Okay, it's just going to make a loop like this and because we're working right off of the spool we actually turn our um, jig rather than actually trying to spin our wire around so just a little trick and I popped it on that first one and now I am going to just start to weave this wire 
round these nails in no particular order or design. Just kind of going back and forth, moving things out of the way as necessary. Okay, I'm pulling that up. And this is what we've ended up with. Quite like it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to squeeze these these wires together. Just tightens up these loops. And then we are going to cut this wire off. And we're going to give it a fairly good length. I'm going to say, let's give it about, hmm, let's give it about four inches or so. Uh, the reason I'm debating that is that this is going to, has to fit through our driftwood. Where we're stringing that through and then this is what you're going to have and so you got plenty of lake length at the bottom and we are going to put a loop in here and then this is where our little danglies will hang from the bottom of it. it might be hard to envision right now but it's gonna look awesome it's gonna look super cool so we have one done we'll continue to make these and once again uh, they don't have to be the same. I'm going to use this particular one for our end ones as well and then I'll switch it up for our center or second ones. Okay, awesome. So now what we're going to do, and we'll do this one at a time. Otherwise, these other ones are going to get in the way. So what we want to do, and actually I am going to bring in, this is a pair of um, bale making, or pardon me, um, jump ring making pliers. Uh, they have other uses as well, but that's what I primarily use them for. So then we're going to put these flush up against our driftwood and then we're going to come out probably about a centimeter or so, half an, half an inch let's say, and then just give it a good squeeze and then we want to take this wire and we want to wrap it around the barrel of, whoops I ended up underneath the driftwood, we want to just pull on that, tighten it up as much as possible. This is super heavy wire so that can make it a little more challenging. A lot of pliers and we do have somewhat of a loop there. That's exactly what we are doing. And then we're just going to snip that off. And then just straighten it out. Okay and that is where some of our pretty little danglers are going to hang off of. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of these. top part of our wind chimes. Okay, so we're going to set that off to the side. 
And then we will start to make our little danglers. So for those, we're going to need our beads. And we're going to need our bits and pieces of jewelry. I have this chain and actually I had decided what I was going to do was I was going to use this chain to actually hang it by. So there we will make jump rings and attach that at the end. But essentially that's how it's going to attach. So we're going to put that component just completely out of the way so that it doesn't inadvertently get used for something else. All right, so we got crystals. We got, I'm assuming this was probably part of an earring. This is part of a pendant. I'm not a big fan of the bigger chains, but we have some silver balls. We have a couple of crystals. And then once again, a whole schwack of our beads. So what we're gonna have to do first and foremost is decide what is going to go where. Now I am a fan of symmetry most on the most part. So I think what I want to do is I want to have a couple of these. How many? Oh yeah, there we go. Couple the these as the longer center. And then we'll put one of these on either side, like that. And maybe we'll get this guy down here. Just can't see that. I'm on a frame. Sorry, guys. Right, get this guy down here. And I definitely want a crystal on a couple of these. Just for that little bling factor. Right, so we have that. And then we can certainly add some color by adding a crystal, a little blue crystal, to a couple of these. This one here has something caught on it. So we want to open up. I don't know if I broke that or not. So we could always do something like that. Gives us a little bit of color, a little bit of bling. All right, so there. We'll probably want to throw one in the center. Once again, there's symmetry involved in this. Put one in there. Figuring this out here. And then we can add a few more beads. It's always good to have, have your projects planned out. And then you know how you want to put it together. Okay, we got one of these, one on either side. But once again, you do not have to have symmetry with these. You can do pretty much anything that you want. All right, that's probably going to be plenty long. So then that takes care of those. And let's keep with the theme with our little blue crystals here for the center part. Doo, 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 doo. Maybe we'll take this apart and have a few of these somewhere on here. Uh, let's just figure out how this is going to work. Oh, maybe not. That's... Oh, here, let's see if we can cut this in the center here. We might be able to get two pieces out of it. I think this was an earring, actually. Okay, see so how I did that? Just cut it. And as this catches the wind, it will flip from gold to pink. Cheerful. Very nice. I quite like that. That was a good call, I think. Now that we've determined what we want to use on our wind chime, we are going to start to wire this stuff together. And that's going to mean making um, 
beads that with wire that go all the way through with a little loop um, right to just making jump rings that will fit on pre-existing beads that we have. We're also going to have to use a smaller gauge wire so the um, the 18 gauge wire uh, as the 16 won't fit through our crystals and that is okay it's not going to affect the integrity of the project so we're going to start just down here at the bottom and kind of work our way up and determine what it is that we need to do I have just a couple of scrap pieces of wire at the moment um, they're short and easy to work with so we're going to go with this initially and we do have our uh, jump ring making pliers again um, may not be big enough for some of the jump rings that we need um, but they'll give us a good start okay and because this is just sort of a rustic piece of art your loops do not need to be perfect all right so that's gonna be our first one here and we're working starting with the center so we're going to and I don't want this this was actually the earring part of it so I'm going to just cut this off pull it off and I think this is actual brass so this will probably verdigree really nice and verdigree is the the green color that brass and copper tend to turn so then we want to close that up so that there's no slippage on it and having a big loop like this is going to benefit us because we're popping this big bead on next right so then it's just automatically going to hold it in place and it gives a little bit of space between the two pieces which adds to the design all right so the next piece is going to be our little silver balls here um, this already these already have a link on them here so I'm going to create another loop here and it can be a smaller one because this is smaller as well and then I simply do that by just, just using those pliers and creating that loop you can freehand these two people it's not not an issue the thing is, is obviously this wire is pretty heavy duty okay so we're going to turn that up Okay, here's our first part of that. Now with this, we already have our loops, and since we took it apart and pulled those loose, they're open. So I closed it back up and I am going to pop it on there, just like that. And now we are going to have to string a piece of wire through our copper bead here and attach it to that. Once again, we've got our little, our short piece of wire. So we're just going to make a little jump ring at the end, just like that. Little loop. Straighten it out a little bit. This part we'll hook onto. Nope. I didn't close that. Close it right up. <clears throat> Stringing that on here, making sure that's closed up nice. And pop it on our copper bead like that. Then we're going to have to do the same thing as we're going to have to make the loop in here and capture this because we're going to have to use the smaller gauge wire for these little blue guys. So put that on there. We're just creating that little little loop. We're introducing our thinner gauge wire and 
as you saw when I took them apart this has a hole on both sides so we have that there so we'll do the same thing to the other side and so on and so forth so let's just keep going and working our way through the beads until we actually get them all strung So we went ahead and we um, attached all of our little danglers here and I really quite like how they came together. Very bright, very cheerful and it's going to give us a lot of movement in the wind. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our chain which is what we're going to hang it with um, ultimately. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, put the 18 gauge. I've cut um, about a 3 inch long piece. Um, I would have preferred to go with the 16 gauge but the chain links are just a little bit too small for it. So anyway this is fine it will still hold it as we're going to wire it to the hooks on our little wind chime here so we're quite simply popping that in there and then we're going to just close up that loop so that it holds it nice and firm and there's not slippage and it popping out um, although this we've pressed pretty pretty flat as well so and then we're just going to give that a couple of a couple of twists a couple of twists just to make sure that it's good and secure a little bit cumbersome you can use your pliers as well not the easiest thing to see I suppose with all of this stuff in the way but yeah it's kind of a messy wrap here and that's okay because this whole thing is kind of rustic kind of rustic looking so go in there and we're cutting cutting that off and pressing those flat as much as possible all right there is one so we will do that to the other side as well just threading it through the hole holding on to it and crossing our wires a little bit to capture that chain and then we are just wrapping once again we can use our pliers just wrapping that wire around the base where the chain is taking the other wire doing exactly the same thing I know this is probably hard to see you guys but just so long as that chain is not going to slip off Okay, so now we have the chain, and you could use fishing line or jute or, you know, really, um, it's up to you. But, once again, this kind of stays with the theme of our recycled jewelry and what's not. Alright, now comes the time to start attaching these. And I'm going to work from the outside in. same thing I'm going to close this up this one on the end and then slip it over the wire here just that much simpler That's it. thank you for popping by and checking out what I have going on and if you haven't subscribed yet please do so hit the bell to get the notifications and i love to hear from you guys so certainly leave your comments and i will get back to you 
In the meantime, I want you to have a fantastic day and don't forget to swing back around and see what I have going on next. <laughs>